Let's find an inverse of a one-to-one -one function. How do we find an inverse? To find an inverse, you're first going to change f of x to y. Then you're going to interchange x and y. Then you're going to solve for y. And fourth step, replace y with f inverse of x. OK, let's do a couple of examples. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to replace f of x with y. Why? So that it's easy to work with with our algebra functions. Uh-huh. And then you're going to have 2x plus 3. Tee hee, tee hee. That was step one. That was fun. In step two, we interchange our x and y. So that means where I saw y, I'm going to put an x. And where I saw an x, I'm going to put a y. OK. <laughs> put three on it. Sure. And then I'm going to solve for y. Yeah, that's um, step three, solving for y. So I subtract off that three. Minus three is equal to two y. And then I divide by that two. So then x minus three over two is equal to y. And finally, the fourth step where I'm gonna get you. I'm gonna tell you I'm taking points right here because this is the most commonly forgotten step. You need to interchange y with f inverse of x. And then that's equal to an x minus three over two. Oh. Moving on to my next one. Yes. My contacts blurry? I don't know. I'm back up here. Okay, following my same processes. Uh-huh. Okay. Interchange f of x with y. Yes. And then this is x plus two. Oh, to the third power. Now, I want to interchange x and y. I'm going to let x equal mm -hmm, y plus 2 oh, to the third. Now you need to solve for y. That means you need to take the third root of both sides. What you do on the one side, you must also do on the other. Here I have the third root of x is equal to y plus 2. Ugh. Come on, marker. Wow. I hate it when they just quit on you like that. Okay, yes, subtract off that two. This is the third root of x minus two is equal to y. Very nice. Um, so then, last step, f inverse of x is equal to the third root of x minus two. And then, yeah, a box. Ooh, that's not a flower. What is that? It's a tent. Do you know why? Because that last problem was in tents. And a flower. But if you don't believe me, check it. How do you check whether or not your found inverse was the actual inverse? Well, there's a property of inverses. Uh-huh. OK. And this is the property. To check it, you're going to check the composition of the two, the inverse and the function. Yeah, f of f inverse is going to spit out the argument if it's the inverse. f of f inverse is the argument. Composition. If you want to check out composition, look at the composition video. Yes. Um, it also goes both ways. Right. Here in these algebras, um, our left products and our right products are the same, but that's not true with all algebras. So then you'd want to can, you know, check it both ways. Okay, yes, up here to this example. Let's look at f of f inverse of x. This is going to be f of f inverse of x. This is going to be f of my f inverse was found to be x minus 3 divided by 2. Oh, yes. So then, everywhere I see an x in f of x, I'm going to put this. So sure, this is going to be 2 times, wait for it, x minus 3 divided by 2. Yes. In addition to that, I'm going to put a 3. OK, if I and then I have x minus 3 plus 3. Oh, when we see, we do get our arguments. So then we can conclude, yes, inverse. 
Bringing me on up here. I'm gonna check that composition once more. Once again. Uh oh. Yes. I'm looking at f of f inverse of x. If I compose the two and it does give me the arguments or x, the identity himself, then we do have inverses. So then I'm looking at f of. I found. That's an awful flower. I found that my inverse was. Uh huh x minus 2. Oh, what does that say? Every verb in x, I see an x. I'm going to put the third root of x minus 2. And here we go. This is going to be, this is going to be um, the third root of x minus 2 plus 2 to the third. Finish him. Okay, so then um, um, yeah, that's the third root of x to the third, which is going to get you x. And yes, it is an inverse. That's a much nicer flower.